yet sometimes there is a time and place to tell the government no, to say what you are doing is inherently wrong, it is unnecessary, it is it may not be evil, but it is completely silly, and I refuse to obey, and so spank me or go away. And so, you know, it's kind of amazing. What I love about Keen is I love watching you, Ian. You'll go in there. And you'll have like, oh, an open container of alcohol. I'm not bothering anybody. I'm not bothering or molesting anybody or harassing anybody. But I have an open container of alcohol. Go ahead and arrest me. And, ah, rah, 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 rah. you know, what really it shows that what the government cares about is not the open container of alcohol. They can't have people like you out there making fun of them, right. disobeying them flagrantly. So, like, my idea— They hate that. Oh, yeah. When I was in Hawaii— my idea was to take an open container of alcohol. So our tour guide said, you know, get a thing of Jack Daniels, go to Burger King, pour it in the cup, get some soda, walk along the beach, watch the sunset while drinking Jack and Coke. And I immediately pipe up, isn't that illegal? And he says, well, you don't tell the cops you're doing it. Yeah, it's illegal. And I thought, this is very interesting. The tour guide, all the reasonable good people know that this law is silly, this sure. open container law. And yet the cops, for them, I said, you know, I'm going to get an open container. I'm going to have James hold a sign with an arrow pointing to me going, open container, please arrest me. And it's like, please don't do that. Please don't do that. You know, you're, that, you're, that's what the, the cops uh, said. You're going to destroy your record. And I'm like, well, I'm already retired. I don't care about my criminal record. <laughs> we, don't come to, we don't come to New Hampshire and do this to you, and we take care of people here. And I'm like, I take didn't know care. how. Well, he said, he said, we take care of people here. And I'm like. You mean like we take care of people here or we take care yeah. of people. Mahalo. Oh, we love you. And I didn't know how to really interpret it's, that. I think it's the former. Yeah. But, you know, ultimately what it is, it's not the container of alcohol that matters. It's the somebody's making fun of the law and yeah, flagrantly the disobeying them. And they can't have the public seeing somebody break the law so openly, so publicly because then you're on a slippery slope because then everyone might start disobeying that law. Right. And then and then you know their power is hanging by a thread. They're essentially to some extent a paper tiger. Yes, they will lash out and hurt people, but if enough people were to disobey them, they would be unable to control it. And of course, the perfect example of this, I think the classic a uh, keen example of this. Keen is the place. Oh, please in New say Hampshire. the four twenty smoking. Yes, the keen is the <laughs> keen is the place in New Hampshire where we're doing this show from right now. And of course, uh, we're all here because of the Free State Project, the idea of converging activists together so we can be more effective together. But the but the best example actually involved mostly locals, which was Rich Paul's four twenty celebrations that were happening here. Now, Rich, he's on our Monday night show here on Free Talk Live. He is a uh, a great activist, libertarian voluntarist, you know, through and through. And he started these uh, 420s that were happening publicly in Central Square in, in Keene in 2009. And he spread the word amongst the yeah. locals because at the time he was selling weed uh, in town. Yeah. And, uh, and so you know, a people. lot of people smoke weed. It's just yes. most people they have sense enough. Yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of like being openly gay in the 1970s. If you are a drug, like a pot smoker, if you're a school teacher or a doctor or a lawyer or a real estate agent, anything with a government license, you would be crazy to admit that you smoke pot. Right. So, of course, I mean, it's just like there were a lot of gay people back in the 70s, but everyone had sense enough not to admit it. And it wasn't until a few people started saying, well, I'm gay and I really don't see anything wrong right. with it. when they stood up for themselves. And so that's what was going on on a daily basis. Eventually, it grew to 100 and – I mean, it was like over a week or two, it grew to 100 people in Central Square, which is a relatively small park. I mean, we're yeah. just talking about a – a small and, park in the middle of uh, And the whole idea Keene. was, you know, hey, people smoke in public. They smoke their cigarettes or tobacco, or they drink their vodka martini on the public sidewalk in a nice restaurant. But the We're thing is, the police tried to crack down. They, yes. they came in, and they did their classic thing of targeting who the they thought leader. was the leader. Oopsie. And they did that, and they went and they arrested Rich during one of these big ones with like 100 and something yep. plus people. And that was a mistake. It was. Um, but, in, <laughs> but with anyone else, it might have worked, right? Like, you right. know, they have to try— because they have well, to protect their power. So they took Rich to the police station. Yep. About half oh, of the, they did. About half of the group walked <laughs> down there with signs and you know, uh, chanting. Oh, they walked whatever. more within just signs, Ian. Well, there was they a lot walked, of weed, too. Yeah, they walked into the police station. With no, no, their... that, was the fir that was the second time. So the first day, we went behind the police station, behind yeah. the no unauthorized access sign. Legal. Sat Illegal. down Illegal. in a, uh, a large circle and passed around multiple joints over the period of about an hour while we well, waited for Rich to be released. What was the one Rich where they had released? their bongs and their joints? You were smoking in the middle of the police station lobby. That going... was the next day. Okay, the police yeah. came back out the next day and made another arrest 
of another one of the people they thought was the ringleader. And then again, another 50 people went back to the police station, this time going inside the police station lobby and successfully smoking cannabis inside the police station lobby where there was a, a no smoking arrest. sign that's right. there was a no smoking sign in there Ian. in front of the, the <laughs> agents the, there were people there it wasn't like they didn't know what was going on uh and oh, that, they sure wanted to pretend it wasn't going on that's right yeah because later on that was the last arrest that happened later on the police were saying well we've gotten reports of uh, pot being smoked in central square and we've walked through and we haven't smelled anything so yep. we're just calling this case closed Eight, <laughs> even though we were still smoking every day